When my sister was diagnosed, it was a very different world when it came to cancer care. It also was a very different world in terms of the experience that I had had up until that point. As a physician, uh, I know way too much about cancer. And I'm with my wife and we're praying for a lymphoma, something that, you know, people survive. And it came out as a sarcoma, which is just about the worst cancer there is. We had never dealt with cancer before. It opened us up to an entirely new world. We didn't know where to go for support, where to go for help, and we were people who had experience in the medical community. What I learned through that journey was that there are people who don't have the information and the guidance and the support that they need while they're facing the scariest thing of their life. Annie was 21 when she was diagnosed and 24 when she passed away. I wanted to help in her honor and her legacy build something that would help other people going through a cancer journey. I had been traveling for work and came home and wasn't feeling good all week and thought I just had some mild constipation from eating in restaurants and, you know, generally not taking good care of myself at the time. And finally Friday came around and my wife Megan said, we need to go to the emergency room. She goes, something's not right. Bridget was recovering from her bone biopsy and she was laying on the couch and I looked at her and I said that what we were hoping for as a bone infection was in fact cancer. We did the CT scan and they came back and said we found a mass on your colon. They did a biopsy, it came back as colon cancer. At that time they also found spots in my liver. It's the worst words that you could ever hear as a parent that your child has cancer and she was diagnosed with osteosarcoma, which is a very aggressive type of bone cancer. To be diagnosed at 38 years old, you feel alone. Because going through all my chemo and stuff like that, you go in and you're the youngest person in the room. I wasn't aware of PCSN when Bridget was first diagnosed, but a mutual friend um, had made us aware of the organization uh, while we were in treatment. We were overwhelmed by everything because everything was happening so fast. But um, as soon as I called Jenny, I felt a sense of calmness, like that's going to be okay. I started Phoenix Cancer Support Network four years ago. And in those four years, I have seen so many different ways that people have needs. People need things just like food delivered to their house because they can't get to the grocery store. They need somebody to drive them to the doctor. They need somebody to help them with estate planning. So many things that I couldn't have even thought about when we started this journey that we have been able to build programming around because people have supported our mis mission with donations. Some of the services PCSN has provided for us, and, and some of them are, were super simple. Just having someone sit down and go through my medical bills with me. Because you get out of a surgery, you start these treatments, and they're billing stuff that you have no idea what it is. And you don't know which one to pay first or how to manage the bills. I was really worried about the kids and their mental health and, you know, how, how are they going to handle this. PCSN was really helpful with that. PCSN doesn't consider just the patient, their client. PCSN considers the entire family and all of the people involved in the cancer journey. We look at them as a whole entity and not just one person going through cancer. We want to make sure that we can take the burden off of all of them and we know that that is what will get the patient through the treatment more successfully. In cancer care, if you've never experienced it before, you don't know who to call. If you haven't worked in it, you don't know who the players are. I took what I learned from that experience and turned it into a resource for people so that you don't have to wonder and worry all the time. One of the most amazing things that they did was to provide us support when my husband needed help with the house and when we came home to make sure it was a safe and beautiful environment for Bridget. Taking that pressure off and, and, and knowing that you know people are out there fighting for you because yeah, again, it's one of those, it deflates you, you know, especially when you deal with the insurance company because they just, um, it's so hard. There are so many people diagnosed every year with cancer and here in our community, thousands and thousands of people are going through cancer journeys. 
They do all of the things that the larger organizations can't do. They're not there to call and, and talk to you about situations. Um, the larger organizations, Jenny's there. I can give her a call and ask her from a friend basis. I can also call and ask her to help us with little things that other organizations don't do. An electrician, for other families, it's rides, it's food, it's gas cards, whatever somebody would need at a time like that. PCSN is there to fill the gaps that other organizations can't do. Cancer is such a, it's such a hard thing because it not only affects your body, but it affects everything around you. The fact that they can take some of that burden off your shoulders so that you can focus on getting healthy and getting better, um, that, that's huge. It's huge. I, I don't know who else does that. There are a number of ways people can get involved and help us at Phoenix Cancer Support Network. Number one, donations. We need people to do their own fundraisers. We need people to be advocates for the work that we're doing and raise money. Another way that people can get involved with PCSN is through volunteering. We partner with many community support groups that are providing food and meals. People can help us spread the word that we're really trying to help as many people with cancer as possible. They can do that by looking us up on social media. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on LinkedIn. Find us there, share it with your network. Tell other people, if you can't write a check, Tell people you know who can write a check to write a check or to send us a donation, $5, whatever it is. Every penny counts and goes directly to helping these cancer patients. Guidance. A wonderful resource. Hope. Kindness. Love. Cool. Community. Relentless. Selfless. Comfort. Incredible. Peace of mind. Saving grace. Annie. Awesome.